You're listening to Run, Are You Win? Revive Us Now podcast with Steve Gray. As pastor of the Smithton Outpouring and the Kansas City Revival, Steve is a leading voice of revival worldwide. Steve shares his life-changing encounters with God, along with biblical teaching that equips you to experience and lead lasting revival. Come, run with Steve and expect God to revive us now. Hello and welcome to Are You In Revive Us Now podcast. I am your host, Steve Gray, and I want to be here to talk about everything revival every single time. I hope you'll never miss a a podcast from now on because you'll want to get the steps. I can't, you know, in one setting, in one meeting, in one podcast, help you understand the glory, the power, the presence of God that God wants to pour out on you and your church and your life and our nation. So we've been talking about how God can save a nation through the people of God. And uh, every, just continue to remind, uh, remind yourself that everything is spiritual. And if you're a believer and you have the spirit of God, remember, you're, you're a partner in this with God. You're not just everything's fixed and you can't do anything about it. Had somebody ask me that the other day. They said, do you believe everything's fixed? And, you know, we just have to go with the flow. And I said, absolutely not. That's why Jesus said when he talked to him about, uh, in, in Matthew, that if they see these things happen, they should flee to the mountains. And then he said, pray that it not happen in winter. And I said to him, I said, that's why you need to pray. I mean, if it was fixed, it would happen in winter, then there'd be no reason to pray. But there are things that we are partners with God in through the Spirit of God. And one of them is to figure out what is going on in America right now, what's going on in the world, and where do we play? Uh, what do we play? What role do we play? Including this pandemic that has got us stuck and, and mask wearing and, and all the things that we're going through today. What has that got to do with, with the church? And we want to look in the Bible and learn things that we're facing and circumstances and see what can we do? Where are we in history? Is there anything that the believers, the church, the Christians can do, the spirit filled people? Is there anything we can do? And I want to tell you something. Uh, the other day, uh, I was asked to go to uh, pick up some food for the kids or whatever. And I don't go to fast food restaurants. And another thing I don't do, I don't like to go to the drive up thing, you know, and, and, and say what we want. I just don't like to do it. So I, I always take somebody with me and then they got to lean over and say you know, what they want. Well, we went the other day and I pulled up and of course, I couldn't hardly understand them, but they said, can I take your order? And I thought about that. And so I gave him my order and I thought about that in the spirit. Do you know what I believe? I believe God is putting in an order. He's put in his order with us. He wants to change. He wants a new order. He wants new order in our churches. He wants to create something new. He's put in his order. And so when I began to think about it, I I started thinking, well, you know, in some ways we are a lot like the days of Noah. Now, I don't think it's quite as bad as the days of Noah, like, you know, all, all the things that were going on. It's close, <laughs> but not quite as bad because it was so bad then. God, God's going to say, I'm going to start over with everything. You know, I'm going to tear this down. I'm going to destroy the world with a flood and I'm going to start over. But still, so I don't think we're there, but still we are in a, a time when God is putting in his order to say, we need something new to happen. We need a new order. We need to have a reframing of what church means. I know people have a lot of problems, but they're not thinking, you know, if I just get with God, I could, I could fix these things. God will help me fix these things. It's not really in their mind like that. So right now, I don't think God's going to destroy us. No. And I, and he's not going to leave us, but he wants to create something new. And you know, when you think of the days of Noah, that's really what happened, isn't it? Because we sometimes focus on the ark and um, the flood and, and, uh, and the, everything was wiped out. But really what God was doing was starting over with something new. And that's what I think he wants to do. And that's why it's so exciting to be alive right now. Even though we see circumstances not always uh, so good that we still know God can pull something out of this. But we're a part of it because Noah was a part of it. See, he saw all the things that were going wrong. But he said, but I found Noah. I found Noah. And Noah wanted to do things right. He's called a man of righteousness. He's actually called, he's he's not called a 
boat builder. He's actually called a preacher. Did you know Noah was a preacher? Yeah. And he got it right, didn't he? He had to build a boat. <laughs> he had to build an ark, but he was a preacher of righteousness. Here's a man that wants to get it right. And it seemed like, as you read this, that God was struggling with finding somebody that wanted to do it right, that they had settled for wrong. They'd settled for off. You know, you know, they'd settled for a church that was just okay. You know, how many times do I hear a year, I go to a good church. Well, I, I'm happy about that. But is that good enough? Or do we want to go to a God church? You, I, I just am a firm believer. If God attends our church, we're going to know he's there. <laughs> is it really too much to ask that we go to a church where God really shows he's there in some way? rather than we just go and, and, and hope he's there sitting on the back row. All right, so anyway, in the book of Genesis, we talk about Noah. Uh, here it, it said, the Lord began to regret. Can you imagine God having regrets? Well, he regretted that he created human beings on the earth, and his heart was troubled by what he saw. Do you suppose that could happen today? Like I said, I don't think he's, you know, he's not going to destroy the earth, but could God be troubled right now? I, I'm troubled. Are you troubled a little bit? Yeah. I'd like to see more rightness in the hearts of people. I'm, I'm more wanting to see it in the hearts of people than I'm wanting to see it in changes in laws. I know laws need to be changed. I know there's some laws that people say the law's not right or government's not right or we need to vote this way or vote that. Okay, I get all that. But to have any lasting value, we've got to not change laws and it's not going to do good to change presidents. We're going to have to have a change of heart, right? We've got to have some people, their hearts are different. If we want to unite our country, if we want to have a united country, and people talking about it now, they say, you know, it's time that we're united. Well, we're going to have to have a change of heart. Because right now, all we're going to do is just uh, cancel everybody. We're just going to tell everybody what they can say and what they can't say is not going to have it that they're not, they're not saying it in their hearts. Right? We want to get it where they're not saying it in their hearts. And only that can be done by the Spirit of God. That's why we're talking about revival. Revive us now. We're kind of in the days of Noah. It's like the, the kid, uh, have you ever heard this one? The kid that went to church and he kept standing up in the pew. And he'd stand up during the song and they'd say, sit down. Or he'd stand up during the sermon and they'd say, sit down. You're not supposed to be standing up and walking on the pew. So finally they get him and they say, we said, sit down. So he sat down. And then he turned to his dad and he says, well, I'm sitting down, but I'm standing up in my heart. <laughs> That's what's going on today. You understand? We got we to gotta get it where it happens in our hearts. So anyway, it says here, I was looking at the book of Genesis. Now the earth was corrupt and uh, in God's sight and full of violence. Oh, man, that struck me when I read that. Full of violence. Whew, don't we have that? Not just around the world, there's a lot of violence. But we got it in our own country. We got our own country, and it, it comes and goes, but then you'll, they'll have it, and there's the murders and violence and people killing other people, and then the riots and the trouble and everything going on. Okay, so God could look and see violence now, even in our own country, couldn't he? We're a violent country, yeah. And God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people of the earth had corrupted their ways. So they just fell for it. They fell for corruption. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people for the earth is filled with violence. Let's stop and think about it. The earth is filled with violence. And because of them, I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So the earth was corrupt in God's sight. And there was what I like to call it, too, that we need to understand. And I don't know if you feel it or not, but I do. The chaos. You see, the kingdom of darkness is a kingdom of, of, of chaos and confusion. People don't know. They don't know what to do. They don't know why this. Why this? Why is this happening? What am I supposed to do with my money? What am I supposed to do this pandemic? Why do I, why I don't want to wear a mask? Well, you should wear a mask. Well, I don't want to. Should I get vaccinated? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm, I talked to somebody yesterday. I was talking to them, and I was on the phone with them, and they said, I don't know. I'm caught between the two. I don't know whether to get vaccinated or not. Get vaccinated chaos and confusion and trying to figure out what's going on and so we realize what's happened is God's order 
Because God see, works in order. God has an order. If you read about heaven, it's very ordered. Everybody has their place and everybody's happy about it. And so God's, when things get out of order, then confusion and chaos and the spirits of darkness come and we just, and it, it just breaks out. And so God, that's why I said, God's like putting a new order. He says, I'm putting in my order. And we, we're like the people on the other end. Can I take your order, God? He says, yeah, I want to put a, I want to put in an order for something new. A new world, a new world is what he put in with Noah. What is he putting in for the church? I want to put in something new. I remember when I lived in that country town, you know, Smithton, Missouri, and we had that big revival there in 1996, and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people came. And we didn't have stop signs, you know. And we didn't have any traffic signs by the church. They put a four-way stop up later because there was so much traffic. But uh, finally, after a couple of years, I came over the railroad tracks, and I saw in the distance a bright white light. And I thought, what is that? It's over by the bank. They did have a bank. That's about it. No gas station closed. Uh, no gas. So you had to buy gas before you came to town, or you're not going to leave town. We even had guys that started a ministry, of gasoline ministry. So they'd go around in the back of their truck, they'd have barrels of gasoline because they knew people didn't fill up before they left. When you got, you know, you got a town of 532 people and you got 1,000 people in the church, most of them not in the town. So you've doubled, tripled, really. There's 500 in the town and there's 1,000 in the church. That's 1,500 people in town. So no gas. Well, anyway, I saw this bright white light. I come over the rail track. What is that white light? I've never seen that before. So I start driving toward the white light and I turned the corner and there it was. It lit up the night in this little town that had nothing. And it was a bright white light that said Pepsi. They had put a Pepsi machine in town. They thought we could sell a lot of Pepsi in this town because there's nothing there at night. And I edged up to it, and I fumbled around, and I got some money out, and I put my money in, and it clicked, and a little sign came up where you put your money in, and it said, out of order. What? Oh, you see, that's so much like our churches today. We got them all lit up, but they don't work. There's nothing to drink. Ah, so I went away thirsty from a bright white light. <laughs> so you get the point, we're lit up and we do everything right and we cross over. Hey, there's a bright white, white light. There's some hope. I'm going to get something to drink, but it's out of order. We got to get God's order back again. And he's put in his order. I want to do something new. So, um, so Noah was a righteous man, it says, it goes on to say in verse nine, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithful with God. So this is a great candidate, right? He's a good candidate to do something for God, to let God put in his order and say, I want to do something. I told, I told the church the other day, you know, how my life has changed. When I first became a Christian many years ago, uh, one of the first things I learned is you could ask God something. You can ask God. And God wants to do things. God want, I, I didn't know any of this. I wasn't going to church. And I grew up around church, and then I dropped out. And I didn't know any of this. I didn't know about the filling of the Holy Spirit or anything or the gifts of the Spirit or anything. And they began to talk to me and said, do you know God wants to take care of you? God wants to bless you. God wants to do good. God wants to prosper you. I'd never heard that one before. And, um, and so, uh, you know, I began to think about it. And so I learned, you know what? You can ask God for things. So ask God and believe. Believe by faith. Don't waver in your faith. So I learned all that stuff about how to ask God and to go for God and God will supply your, my every need, you know, and I, I didn't know any of that stuff. And it was good and right and still right today. Now, uh, as I'm older and I've been doing this longer. I've, I've changed my tune a little bit because now I'm telling God to ask me, what can I do for you? You've trained me, you've blessed me, you've prospered me, you've revived me. Because, listen, I was in the ministry for a long time, and I needed to be revived. I was dying. I'm a pastor dying on the inside, trying to preach. Now, I know a lot of pastors know exactly what I'm talking about, and church folks too. And he revived me, he renewed, gave me a worldwide international ministry. I was just a country preacher, a nobody. And all of a sudden, I'm flung out there and... and 
local and then national and then international. And now I'm on TV shows and newspapers and woo, boy, he's been good to me and given me a ministry I didn't have. But so in return, instead of spending the rest of my life saying, okay, God, I got another request for you. You said you'd, I could ask whatever and you'd do it. Ask whatever you will. Well, I've got, I'm going to ask you this. You ask me, what can I do for you in, uh, in the years that I have remaining on this earth? So I want to do something right. So, you know, God came and asked something to Noah. He says, I want you to build uh, an ark to save your family. Hey, get that. What are we up to? Why do we serve God? If you're a parent or grandparent, why would... Why would you want to get serious about God all of a sudden? Because you're not just saving yourself. You're not becoming religious. You're not saying, well, it's just, I guess it's time we go to church. You're out to rescue your whole family from the old order of chaos, violence, protest, division, uh, murders that are up and, 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 and they're up in cities. They're up. Poor New York. I was talking about it yesterday. Poor New York. I love New York City, but it's not New York City that I knew anymore. I said, I don't know if we'll ever get to go back. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to go there now. And so, so everything was out of order. And God says, I'm going to make things right. I'm going to start with a righteous man. We're going to start over. I want to put in my order with you. Noah, will you help me make this right? And that's revival. We're not going to destroy the earth. It's not going to be a flood. But he says, I'm going to come and revive you with my spirit. I'm going to revive my glory. I'm going to put myself in your churches. And you're going to come to church and know I'm there. And I'm going to start doing good things. And you're going to feel the glory and the power. And it's going to be real easy to tell people to come to church. And people are going to get saved. People are going to get healed. But they've got a place to go called the church that's on fire. I, I tell people, I said, you know, Think of how your life would be different as when you got saved, you got born again, you went to church and you sat next to Elijah. Imagine Elijah's on one side and Elisha's on the other side and you're sitting next to them for 10 years or five years or whatever. Man, you wouldn't you be a different believer today? But instead, who'd you sit by? Who'd you get around? You get people that have been there longer than you, but they've cooled off. The sermon's going and they're looking at their watches because they've got something better to do like eat or sports or play games or whatever. So here we are. We're, we're in this situation and we're in the pandemic. And I mentioned before on another uh, podcast, uh, weather is crazy. We just went through a weather snap, cold snap. That's a breaking temperatures, breaking records. You know, it never been cold for so many and the snow. And it never got this cold way down south in Texas and Florida. And, and uh, I was hearing a farmer talking about we've lost all our grapefruit down in Texas, or I think it was. Never seen this. Well, we might have record heat or we might have record. We've had record uh, we went through a season where we had record tornadoes and then we had record hurricanes and we had record floods. Everything's breaking out. What's going on? And now we've got this pandemic. We've got COVID and people don't know what to do. We got natural disasters. What's going on? Listen to this. A lot of people don't remember this scripture. So I want to, they know Romans eight pretty well, but they miss this one for creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed for the creation. All right. Now that's when you talk about the weather and the hurricanes and the earth and uh, global warming. If you think that's happening, whatever that's creation was subjected to frustration creation. Okay. So get this, the garden of Eden's there, Earth is mind in its own business. And then through humanity, through Adam, sin came in the world. And now we got death and we've got disasters and we've got wars and we've got to. And, 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 and he said, you're going to go out and work the ground and it's going to be tough. Not going to be easy to do. Um, all that happened. So now creation is subjected. They didn't sin. Creation didn't sin. Man did. Created did. The created. Anyway. So it says not they are subject. The earth creation is subject to frustration, but not by its own choice. You're just thrown into it. And so he says now creation itself wants to be liberated from its bondage and decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. All right. We're getting some order here. What's the order? 
The children of God are supposed to be in freedom. There's freedom. We're supposed to be free. The children of God. I'm not talking about people, you know, living the way they want to live and they don't go to church and they don't care about God. All right, but you do, right? If you care about God, we should have freedom. And it says, and the glory of the children of God. And it says the earth creation wants to be liberated and wants to experience what the children of God can experience. And it says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. All right, so the earth is groaning. We, how come we're having the, I had people ask me, how come we're having such exaggerated weather? How come we're having a winter like this? The earth is groaning, wants to be free. It's, it wants to be liberated. It wants order. It wants God's order. It'll settle down. It wants God's order. We're going to have more hurricanes or storms or bad weather. And then we got this pandemic, and, and, and sometimes it looks okay, doesn't it? And the next day you hear, oh, it's breaking out in another strain of it or whatever. And the earth is straining like, a, like, like, like in childbirth. The pain of it, why, why does it say childbirth? Because even the earth wants to see something new, and that's revival. See, revive brings back life to the half-dead, the half-dead church, the half-dead pastor, the half-dead sermons that are being preached. And, and our, our folks, I get it. I get it. Our folks are so discouraged that every week now they have to go find a preacher that tells them, keep going. You can make it. Climb that mountain. Forge that stream. God loves you. God loves you. God cares. Be encouraged. Don't give up. Well, I believe in all that stuff, but that's not exactly the freedom and glory of the children of God that's going to attract everybody else in the world. I mean, would you want to get involved with the people that are totally discouraged and just hanging on? That's the church today. Half dead, but revival comes and renewal comes and the power comes. Something new. And that's the story of Noah. Yeah, flood. Yeah, corruption, violence, terrible things out of order. But God said, I'm ready to do something new. That's why I'm here to talk to you about it's time to run. Are you in? God, revive us now with something new. That's, a, that's what this podcast is about. It's all about uh, uh, revival. So you know what a disaster is? You know what that flood was? A wake-up call. They could have They could have changed. Yeah, they could have repented, but they didn't. So everything going on in the world today means that we need to make changes. What we don't want to do is make changes where all we've done is change hands from one government, one president, one party, one believing group, one this. We've changed hands, but corruption of the heart is still there. We got to have. A change of heart is what God's after, and that's the order I think he's put in the order. It's time for something new, revival in the land, revival in America, and that's what this podcast is about. I hope you tell your friends about it. Tell them there's there's somebody that's been in revival, but more than that believes we can have a new move of God, and that's the answer to disaster, pandemic, all the things. The earth is groaning for something new. Now, if the people of God would just join in and groan too, we could have a nation where God revives his own people and God comes down to rescue us. Well, thanks for uh, listening in. I hope you'll do it every single time. And until we see again and see you again or hear you again uh, online, until you're able to listen again, whatever's going on in your life right now, I hope that you'll stay in there. I hope you will be encouraged. But remember, I'm here to revive you and your heart in the things of God. So God, revive us now. Until next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Revive Us Now podcast with Steve Gray. Push the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode and spread the word on social media. For more episodes and resources, go to reviveusnowpodcast.com. Until next time, keep on running for revival.